Hello? Hello, good afternoon. My name is Wardner Maia. I'm from Brazil. I'm in the ISP business since the very beginning of the internet, in commercial internet in Brazil in 1995. And I work for MD Brazil, a Brazilian company. Uh, our company is located in Sao Paulo, and we are basically internet service providers, providing access to final customers, and we also distribute uh, microtech equipments and antennas gyros in Brazil, and we are also in the training and consulting business. We have some previous participations in European MUMs, uh, most related to security, and today we'll talk about DDoS, Distributed Denial of Service Attacks, Detection, and Mitigation. About DDoS, last year we had a very interesting presentation from our friend Tom, Tom Smith, that unfortunately is not here in this moon. But um, in that presentation, we saw a lot of uh, things about the DDoS, a lot of concepts, how DDoS works, uh, and how, uh, what we can do for better plan our network to, to fight against the DDoS. And uh, we saw about BCP38, URPF, how to reduce the surface of the attacks, Etc. Uh, so I strongly suggest you, for the ones that missed that presentation, that go to the Microtech website and get the PDF, get the video, because uh, in that presentation there are a lot of material interesting for our networks. We won't cover such details that Tom did last year. So, but if that presentation was so good, why? Another presentation, why again this subject, DDoS? Of course, the, in the internet, uh, the things move very fast, and uh, some guys are forecasting that for this year, 2016, we will have uh, three terabytes DDoS attacks. And when we thought about the, this, this type of attack uh, is a common sense to, to think that only big companies uh, are targets for that attacks. So, is the DOS a privilege of uh, big companies and big data centers, big websites? Or could my small or medium company be a target? Unfortunately, statistics shows that DDoS attacks increase more in number than in power. The last quarter of 2015, we have 108% increase in the total of DDoS attacks. And <clears throat> if you read in the newspapers, in PC World, ZDNet, you conclude that uh, the size of the company doesn't matter. Each one can be target of DDoS attack. And if you do some searches in the internet, you will find a lot of companies selling the DOS attack service. You can hire for $299 a DDoS attack in a trial mode. And you can choose another plan, another bigger plan, for less than $100. So, the DOS is definitely a reality. And <clears throat> being a target of a DDoS attack is not a, a, a matter of uh, if I will be attacked, but when it will happen. And when it happens, uh, is my company prepared to withstand that attack? Do I have a formal incident response plan? A recent research of Simon Tech said that 43% of companies, they lack a formal incident response plan to fight against uh, all the, not only uh, DDoS attacks, but all 
problems with security in the internet. And I think that this number is much bigger when it comes to small companies, to small ISPs. Well, this is a presentation. This presentation will be about detection and mitigation of the DOS, and we, of course, the, this, the concepts we will see, uh, it, they apply to all the size of the company, but uh, it's mainly targeted in our experience implementing a DDoS solution for our uh, small network as, as a small ISP. And we will uh, see the tools that we used. Uh, we started to work on this subject uh, after uh, last month. We, after Tom's presentation, we, we start to, to think more about the DDoS and start to find solutions, and that uh, is the things that we will try to, to show to you. And we will try to fit the presentation in the, the time, because of it's a challenge to give a presentation before the beer, so I will try to, to go only to the important details, okay? And the agenda for this presentation will be um, an overview of the DOS, the tools that we used for the mitigation and the detections, and we'll see a hands-on, we'll try to access um, the, the, the real uh, routers and, and see what has happened. And finally, I'll try to give you the share of the cake that is uh, some other things that with this implementation, with this implementation that uh, is targeted to DDoS, we can have another cool things in our network like cool graphics, like cool information about uh, parts or total of our network. So we started to an overview of the DDoS. I think everybody knows what a DOS is. Um, yeah, is a, a way one computer compromise another computer and uh, one to one, and a DDoS is when uh, a lot of computers uh, want to compromise one computer, and the DRDOS, distributed reflected, is a DDoS using reflectors, using uh, other uh, equipments that are misconfigured and can uh, reflect, can amplify the attacks. Basically, uh, this is the anatomy of a DDoS attack. We have the attack who handle these handlers, and we have compromised machines, the zombies, and we have the amplifiers. The amplifiers usually are the CPEs, the, the radios, the ADSL modems, cable modems, that are misconfigured uh, as open resolvers or NTP, a lot of um, uh, types of uh, software misconfiguration that can, we can have uh, millions of uh, amplifiers in the internet. And how to fight against the DOS? The first thing is to do our homework, and our homework to fight against the DDoS is to first implement BCP38 by firewall rules and URPF. Implementing BCP38, you'll be a good, good guy for the rest of the world, but you'd not avoid that people, uh, if everybody implemented BCP38, uh, the amplifiers will not work, but uh, unfortunately, there are some uh, networks that do not implement uh, BCP38. So, but we have to do our job, and uh, the, the, the ways to, to do that you can find in Tom's presentation from last year. Uh, find in your network the amplifiers. You can find uh, a lot of equipments uh, that could act as amplifiers in our network, and it's very common by mistakes and configuration, and 
at the end of this presentation, I will not show the, the commands to do that, but at the end of this presentation, uh, I insert uh, some slides that show the, the commands you can do, the scripts you can do to find the, the amplifiers in your network. So find the network and fix the, the problem. Uh, another thing, a good thing, is to subscribe to Team Synru. Um, is a, they, they provide a, a service by BGP, a BGP feed, uh, informing the Bogon's prefixes, the prefixes that are not allocated for service, and ensure that all your space announced to eBGP have internal routers to your network, avoiding static loops. Static loop. A static loop, we call a static loop when you have a, a route announced to the internet, you have a eBGP route announced, and you don't have this, this route inside your network by a static routing or OSPF. Uh, so if is this, this case, we have the route, and we can receive packets from the internet, and the packet arrives in the provider, there is no route inside, the packet is retransmitted to the upstream provider, and the upstream provider transmits again, and the packet will do this way until the TTL expires. So, ensure that all you are announcing to the internet have the right route to your network, and if you are not using that uh, prefix, don't advertise it to the internet, and if you, uh, uh, you are using uh, this prefix, <coughs> but uh, parts of the, the, that prefix that uh, they don't have uh, internal routes, put the, the routes in back hole. So, uh, in this case, a single ping with 64 bytes will generate 2 megabits of traffic. Finally, reduce your exposition to the DOS, announcing uh, the unused space as black hole. In Tom's presentation, there are some hints on how to do that. Uh, you use, usually for customers, slash 30, slash 20, 25, um, uh, uh, slash 29, uh, slash 30, and uh, some broadcast and um, address are in uh, the space, and if you have <clears throat> a provider that has a black hole policy, you can announce that in uh, the space as black hole, because in this case, uh, you will lower your exposition to the DOS attacks. Okay, but, but let's see the mitigation techniques we have. Supposing that our ISP is suffering a, net, a DDoS attack, and this upstream provider provides us a way to mitigate this attack by black holing. <coughs> the, uh, the setup is simple, uh, this provider tells you that if it receives a slash 32 with this community, one community, for example, for instance, 10666, he will put the announced space in black hole. So if you are suffering a DDoS attack, you announce the slash 32 with this community and this provider black holes this IP, and communication with this IP is lost. So you save the SLA of the other customers, but of course this customer will not work. This IP address will not work anymore, but you stop the, the channel flooding. Of course, in this case, uh, the DOS was su successful because uh, at least this IP address is not working anymore. This is the way we do that in MicroTik. Outer OS, we will set a filter 
out filter, accepting the prefix slash 32, and setting the BGP community. And here, we have to remember that we, in networks, in BGP networks, we have to announce the slash 32. The second way to mitigate is when you have a contract with a scrubbing center, with a mitigation cloud provider. A mitigation cloud provider is usually a good provider, a, a good provider with uh, a lot of uh, bandwidth, a lot of equipments, with intelligence to deal with the DOS. And there are some companies that offer the service for a monthly uh, payment, and you can hire this scrubbing center or this mitigation cloud provider. In this case, when you are suffering a DDoS attack, what you have to do is to announce your slash 24 to the scrubbing center, and then the scrubbing center will announce to the internet, and it will, will filter the attack. The, the company has to have, of course, the, 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 the structure to support such type of attacks. Another good idea that uh, these guys from Kunhi uh, is uh, the service they call UTRS. UTRS is a service provided without cost. When a lot of ISPs can apply to the service and make a BGP connection with UTRS, and when one of the ISPs of this community is suffering some type of attack, he can announce to this cloud, to UTRS, the IP attacked, and all participants put in black hole the, the IP received. It's a good idea because boats and amplifiers usually are behind the ISP structure. So if a lot of ISPs in the world uh, join to the service, this can be successful. But uh, unfortunately, I, I think uh, it's a new service. There are very few providers uh, using that service. Uh, I usually take a look of how many prefix are being announced, and I, I, I didn't see more. I didn't see more than ten prefixes announced. So I think uh, there are few participate, participants. <clears throat> Okay, uh, and the good thing is that when you announce the, the, the route, all the ISP put in black hole, and the content provider is not affected, so the normal traffic is not affected. The implementation in Router OS is uh, simple, uh, out, uh, a filter out to Sinhu, advertising the prefix, and setting the as black hole. Um, and when we sent the, the black hole, the, the black hole to the, the provider, we will set the black hole. And there's a specific number, I don't remember the community that Ciro used to, to say that is black hole. Okay, there are ways to mitigate the attacks. But in case of attack, how much time our SLA will be compromised? The problem with a DDoS is that it increases silently, and if you take an action only after your customer complaint, uh, can be too late. And there are cases that uh, the types of attacks that compromise the router, and you, even, you don't have access to the, the, the router. You don't know even the IP address that is being attacked. 
So if you let the things to, to act after the attack can be too late. So there is no space for humans here. You need uh, an automated solution. And there are the tools that we used for detection and mitigation. We use a solution based on micro traffic flow, that's Cisco's net flow. I saw in the agenda that uh, Lorenzo will, will give a presentation about net flow. Ooh. Okay. And a combination of two open source tools, uh, FastNetMon and XABGP. The core of our solution is FastNetMon. FastNetMon is a high-performance DDoS uh, analyzer that works with a lot of uh, ways to capture the packets, like NetFlow, IPFix, SFlow. In our case, we are using NetFlow v9. So uh, FastNetMon is an uh, open source project. This is the inventor of FastNetMon. He's a Russian guy. And I have to confess that um, his support is very, very good, uh, much better than paid services. Uh, all that you ask for this guy, he, he answers. So it's a, a very cool project. And uh, this is the, the link, and we, you can get more details about the, the, the project. The second tool is XABGP, also an uh, open source solution. In fact, XABGP is a BGP-based BGP SDN solution. It's not a real router, but it interacts with uh, BGP routers. And with XABGP, we can do a lot of things. We use XABGP in other situations. It's not the, the subject of this presentation today, but we do use it for other applications in our network. And it's a very cool thing also. So, and the, the way we do the, the detection mitigation is the border routers are configured to send traffic flow information to FastNetMon. FastNetMon is, is hearing and trying to detect some level of suspicious activity. XABGP runs in the same machine and has IBGP sessions with the border routers. In case of FastMon detects uh, attack, FastNetMon trigger XABGP and XABGP announce the, the, prob the problematic uh, IP address or network, you can, can configure both, uh, to the border routers, and the border routers receive this announcement with communities and with the proper filters you can announce to see who with the UTRS or to the mitigation provider. So this is the schema that we implemented. Traffic flow configuration, in our case, by suggestion of Pavel Odinstov, that's the inventor of the FastNetMon, we decrease this, this value for, to one minute. The default is 30. That's, that's it. And in our case, we are using in fact, two instances of FastNetMon. One instance, we have uh, FastNetMon with the full levels only not notifying, notifying the, the support, only notifying about what FastNetMon detects as a DDoS. And other instance with higher levels of PPS and megabits per second, when uh, the mitigation is, is effectively done. FastNetMon installation configuration, very easy. You have a per script, and with just this command, you can 
you can install test that mon. The configuration is a comprehensive file in slash etc fastatmon.conf and you have to list to create this file here, listing all the networks you want to monitor and if in case you have to whitelist some particular IP address or some particular part of a network, you can create a network's whitelist. You have to adjust the, the flow part the, and the net flow, the host that is sending the, the information. And this is the thresholds, the limits, uh, the four by FastNetMon. XABGP in the same file will turn this to on and define an internal community that our router will understand that with that community, some action should be, should, should, should be done. <clears throat> XABGP installation is also very straight, very easy, just two commands. And uh, you have to install SOCAT. SOCAT is um, a, a way to, to make XABGP, it's necessary to make XABGP communicate with uh, uh, FastNetMon, the two demons communicate between themselves. And finally, you have to create a uh, text file with the configuration, the main configuration of XABGP. In case the minimal configuration, local OS, peer AS, router ID, the neighbor, and local address. Okay, let's see uh, the things working. I will try to, to access our router. Let's see how is the internet connection. This is the output of FastNetMon. We see here the incoming traffic, the IP addresses. We see the packets per second, megabits per second, and flows. Basically, is what we see with FastNetMon. Now I'm accessing uh, a router that is communicating with this, with this XABGP. Of course, this is not a, a real router. This is the one router in my, in my home because uh, I think my, my customers will not be happy if I do this with the, the real router. So, um, I will stop the XABGP serve.
Okay. Uh, just to ensure I am in the, the, the right router, I will start the. I start X the BGP. And session is established. OK. You see that there is no prefix sending to, to this router. This is good. This, this means that I'm not under a DDoS attack now. OK. And is that the reason that XABGP is not uh, sending any prefix? I will do some, a little trick to, to, to see the, the prefix sending. Uh, I will decrease the, the levels, the thresholds in Fastnet Mon, and probably I will decrease to a value that uh, each activity can be considered, uh, a, normal, a normal activity can be considered a DDoS. Default is 20,000 packets per second. I will decrease here for 200 packets per second. And I will start restart the fast net mode. You see here, I receive one prefix. There are a lot of fix being announced. If I see here, it pay out. Okay, this is what happens in case of a real DDoS attacks, of course, with only one or two or six IP addresses. Uh, this is uh, the filter that is put in black hole. Of course, that's not what we want to put in black hole in this halter, but uh, to announce with the proper community to our provider, upstream provider, to put in black hole. And this can be done uh, totally automatically. OK, and finally, let's see what we can do with the, this implementation. As you can, can see, FastNetBond has a, a poor interface of uh, a poor output, a text output, but we can do really good things. I would like to thank my, my friend from Ireland, uh, Vicente De Luca, uh, who helped us with this situation. Vicente is using uh, FastNetMon and, um, and um, another implementation is not using XABGP, he's using BIRD. And he is uh, he's doing a, a great job uh, with developing or uh, uh, helping in the development of, of FastNet more also. So, <clears throat> in this setup, we will use the same setup of FastNet more, 
and we will use InfluxDB and Grafana. InfluxDB is a, da a database, an open source database, who deals very well with uh, uh, time depending uh, data. In FluxDB, you can find more information here, and the installation is very straight. Grafana is an open source tool that uh, interacts with InfluxDB and where we can do a lot of cool graphics. And we can see in our network a lot of cool things like uh, uh, how many PPS, how many, how many uh, bandwidth, and we can see these things um, if we want to see only one network, one, to, one slash 24, one, one IP address, we can see with this granularity. So this is how the, the dashboard looks like. And we'll try to access here and see the, the things working. Here are the graphics. As you can see, in this, this installation, we are seeing the megabits per second. How many megabits per second? Here, packets per second, the flows. And in case of uh, a DDoS attack, we will see clearly uh, the, the, the spikes here that occur when uh, we are in a, in a real situation. Okay, um, that's it uh, for this work, we have some links here that are references for this work, for the installation of the, the, all the stuff. And I would like to thank uh, Tom, Tom Smith for the background last year, Pavel Rudinstov, the guy who invented the, who invented the FastNet Mon, Vicente De Luca for the help with the, the InfluxDB and Grafana, Thomas Mangin, the guy who develops ExaBGP, I don't know him personally, but watch a lot of presentations. As I said, we are using ExaBGP for other applications. That's not the subject of this presentation today. And all people from open source community involved in such cool type of projects. And finally, the MicroTicket guys too gave us the opportunity to be here in this nice event. The presentation and the related material can be will be done in our website or MicroTik website, and we have some extra slides with uh, the commands to find on flyers, some details on installation, and that's it. Thank you very much. Questions? Beer? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So this is... Uh,